Hi, today I will show you how to use CSP32 to control the PLC FX3U board. Why am I doing this? First, in some projects, you need more I.O. on ESP32 to control external devices. The PLC model that I'm using has 24 volt DC 16 inputs and 16 outputs. You can connect device such as solenoid valves or 24 volt DC pump directly. Second, utilizes the analog input and output of PLC, which have inputs and outputs of 0 to 10 volts. Third, ability to control stepper motor which I will show you later in another video. Fourth, using only two pins on ESP32 microcontrollers. In this case, I am using TX2 pin and RX2 pin. Last, affordable cost, the FX3 UMT32 that I'm using costs around $60. Next, I am showing how did I connect ESP32 and PLC FX3 U connection diagram for this project. As you can see, the ESP32 pins TX2 and RX2 are connected to the RS485 level converter board. Pins TX2 and RX2 of ESP32 are 3.3 volt TTL level, they need to be converted to RS485 before connecting to the PLC. FX3 UPLC needs a 24 volt DC power supply that connects to the PLC terminal as shown here. I also connected the push button switch so we can simulate the PLC input function. Here is the real hardware, this is the ESP32, right now it is connected to my PC through USB. And, this is the RS485 level converter board, which is connected to PLC through terminal here. The push button switch is located here. For now, please ignore the stepper motor, in the next video I will show you how to control it. Next, we need to configure the PLC for RS485 Modbus RTU. I will use the GX developer software in this video. I really recommend you to search the LE3U manual which will explain some of the constants value that we are using. And, you may find some useful stuff as well. This is the LE3U manual that we are talking about. It is about 11 pages long. Basically, the FX3U PLC is Mitsubishi PLC compatible. However, it is not 100% compatible with Mitsubishi. For example, it doesn't use a CC Link protocol, instead, it uses RS485 Modbus RTU protocol, and you can only read or write M registers and D registers. M register is a 1 bit register, and D register is a 16 bits register. Let launch the GX developer software. Next, you will need to click on New Project. Choose the FX CPU PLC, select the PLC type as FX3U. And click OK. We need to make sure the GX developer software can communicate with PLC through the serial port. Click on Online and then click Transfer Setup. Next, click on the Serial USB button. Make sure you choose the right COM port. On my PC, it is connecting through COM5, choose transmission speed of 38.4 kbps, then click OK. Click the connection test button, if everything is working correctly you should see the message box successfully connected with the FX3U CPU pop up. Click the OK button, and then click the close button. You will need to make sure the PLC parameter, memory capacity is set to 8000 steps. If you did not set this one to 8000 steps when we download the ladder to PLC, GX developer will report an error. I already wrote the ladder to configure the FX3 UPLC RS485. Let me switch to the project to show you. You will need to enter the ladder as shown here to configure the PLC RS485 Modbus RTU mode. Let me try to explain the ladder. First, we load the M8002 PLC register, which is a special register that only turns on when the PLC is power up. During the power on, we will move the value of 40A1 hex into the PLC D8120 register. The 8120 is a 16 bit special register for RS485 communication settings. You can get more information from the LE3U manual. In this example, I'm setting the RS485 as follows 38.4 kbps, 8 bits, 1 stop bit, and parity none. This is how I get the value of 40A1 hex from. The next register that we need to set is D8129, which is a special register for communication timeout. In this example, we set the communication timeout to be 100 milliseconds. The next register is D8121 is a special register for the PLC station number. In this case, we set the station number to 1. You can add more PLC stations to be controlled by ESP32 up to 32 stations. Please make sure you set a D8121 register of each PLC to have a unique station number. OK, let download the ladder into the PLC. Please click online, then click right to PLC. Make sure the main checkbox is checked. When you are ready, click execute and click yes. And then click yes again.
The ladder is downloaded to the PLC, next you will need to power cycle the PLC. Remember, M8002 will only toggle on off during the PLC power up. If you don't power cycle the PLC RS485 setup code won't be executed. Now, let working on the ESP32C code. You can get the source code from the link provided in this video. I'm using ESPIDF as a compiler in this project. I have modified ESPIDF Hello World example code and added my own code as you can see here. The code that handles RS485 communications is in plcmodbus.c and plcmodbus.h. The highlighted code showing here is where I set up the URD number and Texas and RX pins. Next, we create two PLCM register objects M0 and M7 on PLC station number 1. Below is the task that runs every 500 milliseconds. First, we need to initialize our M0 and M7 objects. Inside while loop, the highlighted lines are toggling the M0 register. This highlighted block of codes is printing out the status of the M7 register. Let compile and download the code to ESP32. After we download the code to ESP32, I'm not sure if you see it or not. But if you look at the LED lights on RS485 converter board, you will see both of the LED are blinking. Basically, the ESP32 sends data to the PLC and the PLC responds back. If you see only one LED light is blinking then something wrong. So, how can we check if the ESP32 is really toggling the PLC M0 register? Let's switch back to GX developer software. I will show you how to check the M0 register by using GX Developer. Click on Online, then click on Monitor, and click Entry Data Monitor. Double click on one of the device column cells. Type in M0 and hit Register. Click on Start Monitor. As you can see, the M0 register value is toggling. I'm going to stop monitoring and close the windows. Next, I will show you how to use the M0 register to control one of the PLC IO outputs. In this case, I will use M0 to control PLC output number 4, as I'm already using output number 0 to number 3. We will need to add a rung to our ladder. Let load M0 and then output to Y4, which is the PLC digital output number 4. Compile the ladder and download to PLC. Let me show you the camera view on PLC. As you can see, one of the LED light on PLC is start to blinking now. It is Y004 LED that is blinking. The other option is to turn on monitor mode button on the GX developer. Next I will show you how to read PLC input with the SP32. The push button switch is connected to the PLC input number 3 which is X03, and if you remember, in the C code we read M7 and print out the state of it. Using the same idea as we did with PLC output. We will need to add a rung to our ladder. Let load X03 and then output to M7. Let download the ladder to the PLC. I will switch the screen back to the ESPIDF here. So, you can see the ESP32 printout screen when I press the input button. Well, seem like the push button is working, and ESP32 can read it. I hope you like this video. When my time is permitted, I will make another video to show you how to read analog input from PLC, and also control the stepping motor with ESP32. Please click like and subscribe and see you soon.